um, actually uh, titled today's message uh, Fear Factor. Um, um, actually, um, we had uh, started a series earlier in the year that uh, was called uh, This Changes Everything. And I really never got to finish it in the 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. because, well, I, we got interrupted by the Holy Ghost. And he's welcome to do that at any given time. Praise the Lord. But uh, I did share some of it in the noon, uh, but didn't get to share this. So I wanted to come back and share. But I, so I wanted to share the, the primary scripture um, that we were using in This Changes Everything. Um, it's uh, John 12, 31 uh, through 33. And it says, Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. This is Jesus, by the way. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples to myself. This he said, signifying by what death he would die. So we know that he's talking about, Jesus is talking about his uh, work of redemption, his death, burial, and resurrection. But it's interesting that the verse said, now the spirit of this world is cast out. And we made uh, quite a bit of, uh, you know, uh, ado of that when in the earlier lesson. So you're welcome to, to get those messages and, and do background. But so we're connecting this, uh, you know, uh, the message fear factor, we're, we're connecting it to that. Jesus, what he did um, by uh, arresting and casting out and bringing to zero, not the enemy, Satan, um, he actually um, came to primarily undo his works and free us from fear in all of its facets. Amen. And there are different levels of fear. People oftentimes function in a low level fear and we call that worry. Yeah. So we're going to talk about some of those things today. Um, I want to... Uh, quote some people about the subject of fear. A Methodist preacher uh, once said, I am inwardly fashioned for faith, not for fear. Fear is not my native land. Faith is. I am so made that worry and anxiety are sand in the machinery of life. Faith is the oil. I live better by faith and confidence than by fear, doubt, and anxiety. In anxiety and worry, my being is gasping for breath. These are not my native air. But in faith and confidence, I breathe freely. These are my native air. Uh, Dr. Stanley Jones said this. He said, we do not know why it is that warriors die sooner than non-warriors. But that is a fact. But I, who am simple of mind, think I know. We are in, inwardly constructed in nerve and tissue, brain cell and soul, for faith and not for fear. God made us that way. To live by worry is to live against reality. Maybe some of you know who um, Ann Landers is, um, but uh, um, the late advice columnist Ann Landers used to receive something like 10,000 letters a month. When asked what seems to be the most common topic, she answered that most people seem to be afraid of something. They are afraid of losing their health, their job, or their family. They are afraid of upsetting their neighbor, alienating a friend, or committing a social, uh, she said, fupa, which is kind of a word we don't use anymore, uh, but it would mean a, a social mistake or boo-boo. <laughs> And in, in our day, our, our social media day, I mean, it's just gone to a whole nother level. And... Uh, and so people live in fear. People live in fear. I mean, young people uh, live in fear of being un unfriended. You know, if you don't know what that means, that means that somebody no longer is their friend on social media. And you're like, oh, dear God, you know, unfriend me. <laughs> I mean, most of us are like, whatever. <laughs> oh, you unfriended me. Oh, ouch. You know, I mean, it means nothing to some of us, right? He's like, whatever, <laughs> shoot. Anyhow, um, so, so, but people live in fear, all kinds of fear. And it's, it, we see uh, from these uh, commentators that, that it's to live in a non-reality. Most people are, are fearing things that will never, ever, ever matter. They will never happen, never take place. And oftentimes I, I talk to people and they go, I'm not afraid, I'm not scared, I'm not. Well, you keep trying to convince yourself. It sounds like you're trying to convince yourself. But if you're not afraid, then you, you don't have to talk about it, you just aren't. Y'all with me? Yeah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> um, 
Michael LaBeouf says, most stress is caused by people who overestimate the importance of their problems. They overestimate the importance of their problems. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, maybe some of you know who Carolyn Leaf is. She's on uh, Brother Copeland quite a bit. And uh, just an amazing person talking about the brain. And uh, uh, she said, the American Institute of Health estimates that 75 to 90% of all visits to primary care physicians are for stress-related problems. It is amazing what worry and stress does to your body. Uh, people go to the doctor, they're sure that they're having a heart attack. And then the doctors check them out and they're like, there's nothing wrong with you. And they're finding out that stress is causing more problems than any other thing in people. Isn't that crazy? Worry, stress, anxiety, fear. They are all together. And uh, she said this, you cannot sit back and wait to be happy and healthy and have a great thought life. You have to make the choice to make this happen. You have to choose to get rid of the toxic and get back in alignment with God. You can be overwhelmed by every small setback in life or you can be energized by the possibilities they bring. Do you understand that? Everything that seems like adversity and seems like it's falling apart is an opportunity to stand on God's word, is an opportunity to look to God. Praise God. We know that, um, you heard Ivan talking about CR, you know, uh, the fact is, is that what God has called you to do, you are gifted, you are talented, you are unique, you are fearfully and wonderfully made, you have a purpose, you have a plan. The only way that you can realize this type of greatness is if you will connect yourself to God and quit trying to do it yourself. Amen. And we worry about everything. We just take it on so quickly. And uh, we, no, nothing has exposed that more than this past year. Fear was the number one problem in this year. And I'm talking about in the last 12 to 14 months. Fear. Satan is an intimidator. And if we don't get back to God, he will run us right off of a cliff. Do you understand? Hallelujah. Remember what he said about fear? It's not real. <laughs> fear is what got us into this whole program. Satan fed um, Eve, right? She was afraid she wouldn't get something that she felt like she should have. You will be like God. She's like, Rrr. And worse than that was Adam who was standing there looking at her. She was naked. I don't know if he heard anything the devil said. All we know is when she said, here, Adam, he went. Oh, my goodness. Praise the Lord. We won't go any further with that. So uh, one of the biggest fears people have in their lives is failure. And this is what um, Ann Landers found. Afraid they won't succeed if they try something new. Fear that they might never make it doing what they are passionate about. Fear, they, fear keeps them from following their heart. Praise God. So fear is an immobilizing thing. It causes us to be totally restricted and chained. You can never be what God has called you to be, living and walking in fear. Praise God. And all fear is rooted in separation from God. The very first thing that took place was they hid themselves. So we were afraid. Isn't that something? Right from Jump Street, sin entered the world, right? And now they're separated from God and fear ensues. 
Crazy stuff. In Hebrews chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15, it says, Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and, this is good, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. This was a huge reason for Jesus to come, was to rid us from fear. Fear actually um, is a spirit. The spirit of fear is the opposite of a spirit of faith. Do you understand? Um, it actually will manifest it will come on uh, unexpectedly. You could be driving down the road and that thing will try and jump on you. And you need to be aware and we need to guard our hearts from that. It's like, oh, no, 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 no. You will not get in an accident today, Pastor Annie. You will not get in an accident today. Because safety is of the Lord. And he gives his angels charge over me. Right? And they're around me, surrounding me, lest I dash my foot against the stone, let alone have a car accident. I don't even get to kick a pebble. The enemy will come and say all kind of stuff. You're not going to make it. Nobody likes you. They'll never hire you. And give you all these reasons. And then you'll do the blame game. But you got to understand that favor comes from God and there's no skin that can stop it. You understand me, people? This is not a human problem. This is a faith problem. And all of hell could be against you, but God is on your side. And believe me, there are all kind of different um, vehicles of which uh, fear and intimidation and Satan and demons can ride on. Amen. All kinds of vehicles. But when you are in faith and you're walking in confidence, you walk into whatever adversity that you think that, oh, this is impossible. You just have to speak God's word and say, oh, the demons are now arrested. And I'm surrounded with favor. I've seen it happen. It just seems like not the most qualified person in everybody's eyes is getting the job. And someone would say, faith isn't fair. Faith isn't fair. Favor's not fair. What is fair? We are called to walk and live our lives as God intended for us to, to walk it and to step in to the steps he has created for us to walk in, to walk through the doors he has opened for us. Uh, we can't be worried about everybody's feelings. Well, I don't know. I don't know if I should take this job because it's not fair. No, take the job. Because when righteousness rules... It doesn't matter if you are uh, the head manager of 7-Eleven. Wherever it rules, the people are going to be better off. Amen. And it might be naturally that somebody's more qualified, but supernaturally they are not. Amen. That they are wicked, they are unfair, right? And God is raising up righteousness so that the, the mass, the, the greater good would take place. Joseph was uh, put in his position from prison. Ruler over all the wealth of Egypt. Pharaoh said, only in my seat am I uh, more powerful. Only in this spot. Everywhere else they will answer to you. From prison. He's like, well, I, you know, I just don't have the tenure that all your men have. I don't know that I should take this position today. <laughs> I 
I think I should have a few more years of service, sir. No, step in with confidence. Act like you know what you're doing. Fake it till you make it, baby. Well, I, I guess I will. Thank you, sir. Put the ring on your finger, robe, marry the woman, make babies. I don't know if you know the story. Go back and read it. You'll know what I'm talking about. God has greatness inside of you, a great plan for you. No amount of stupidity in this world can stop you from fulfilling the plan of God. And the very adversity of Joseph's life were the very things that were preparing him and qualifying him to stand in this high position. Praise the Lord. So Jesus came uh, to set us free from fear. Isn't that right? In uh, the Amplified, it says, Since therefore uh, these, his children, share in flesh and blood in the physical nature of human beings, he himself in a similar manner partook of the same nature, that by going through death he might bring to naught and make of no effect him who had the power of death, that is the devil." And also that he might deliver and completely set free all those who through the haunting fear of death were held in bondage throughout the whole course of their lives. Whew. Jesus came to set us free from fear, people. Amen. That we are not to live or walk in any aspect of it, not carrying any concern. And we need to, some of us just need to wipe that look of concern off of our faces. I mean, you just walk around going, what does that mean? I mean, what we read into it is, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what's going to happen. I, I, I don't know. And just live in fear and worry. That is no way to live. God is your God. That means you can walk out of your house, take a deep breath, And expect good things to take place. Yeah. Run around in the community. Enjoy yourself. Come on now. Praise God. Live free. Walk free. Don't live in fear. As I said, most of us have a, a low-grade fear that we kind of maintain, a worry. You know, we feel like if we let go of it, then things will just get out of control. If I don't hold on just to a, a, a little bit of concern, then everything will just go awry. But that is so unscriptural. Glory to God. In uh, the Song of Solomon, it says, Our vineyards are in blossom. We must catch the little foxes that destroy the vineyard." The little foxes that spoil the vine. The little foxes. Glory to God. And some of us, we have inherited worry from our families. Some of us, uh, honestly, you have to just really check yourself. I mean, I, I don't know if y'all remember. Uh, did anybody ever watch Batman back in the day, you know? <laughs> You know, and the narrator, you know, he's like, could this be the end of Batman? Will the Joker, you know, and so you're like, oh, you know, your little boy going, oh my gosh, we'll never be able to watch Batman next week if this happens. But I mean, we have this in the back of our mind. I really believe that the first thing that many of us need to do is to get delivered from the news. We need an exorcism. You are afraid not to watch the news, and that is a problem. 
to not know what the pending doom is. If I don't know what the pending doom is, how can I be doomed properly? <laughs> Serious, I do not turn that on. And I realize, listen, the Bible says to watch and pray. But you better watch what you're watching. And know that what you're watching is really what's going on because you could be praying for something that doesn't mean nothing. Crying out to God. Oh, God, save us. He's like, from what? I don't even know. All right. And we find out that faith cannot be exercised where the will of God is not known. And so we want to know what God's mind is about prayer when we come to him. Listen, the prayer of faith shall save the sick, not the prayer of fear and unbelief. You think because of your strong crying that he's going to be moved? Well, I guess we should do something for him. That's just horrible. <laughs> no, the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Uh, you have no approach to God. They that have come to him must believe that he is and is a reward of those who diligently seek him. So we, we, we lose our approach. We have a separation when we carry weights and cares that are actually counterproductive to our walk with God and to everything he's called us to do. You are not a worm. You are not less. You are not um, substandard. You are not a stepchild. You're not even a grandchild. You are a direct offspring of the Most High God. So you can, can't continue to function feeling like you're less for any given reason. Do you understand? We are all spirits made in the image of God. The Bible says that there's neither Greek nor Jew. There's neither, right? You take that all the way out. There's not black, white, Hispanic, Asian. We are all spirit beings. It actually even says there's neither male nor female. And that would get some people real happy, I know. <laughs> you realize that we're talking about the spirit here. <laughs> Because he did make them male and female. Two choices. Anyway. <laughs> All right, we'll move on. All right. In 1 Peter chapter 5. Oh, goodness, I'm running out of time. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 through 8. It says in the New King James, it says, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Casting. All your care upon him, for he cares for you. Now, this is interesting. It says, casting all your cares. There's two cares in this verse right here. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. The first care, it actually means something that divides. Casting all the things that divide or separate you from him. Cares, worries, anxieties separate you. Does that make sense? Yeah. I just don't feel God in my life. What are you worried about? He's your father. He loves you. Amen. He doesn't love you because you're perfect <laughs> or cute or cool <laughs> or really smart. He loves you. He just loves you. Yeah. He loves you. So much. So we get rid of those things that separate us. And then the, the next care is nurturing. Nurturing. 
So we get rid of those things that separate us and we uh, come, then we're able to come to him to be nurtured. Isn't that wonderful? And all these things are for this reason. It says, be sober, be vigilant. Why? After coming out of that statement, be sober, be vigilant. That means the enemy is sneaky. He slips these things in on you. So you start taking these things on yourself. And listen, it talked about humility. It is not humility to say, I got this myself, God. I got this. Because that is separating. He goes, all right. You take credit for your children then. And we'll see how they turn out. Yeah. <laughs> this is the reason why I never wanted to teach on raising kids. <laughs> That's kind of pretty much held to, man, we just hope it works out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Believe in God for these boys. <laughs> Thank God for what he's doing in their life. Believe, man, you have amazing children. What did you do? I'm like, I don't know. Ask their mother. <laughs> and it's pretty much God. I'm pretty sure it's God. Pretty sure it's God. I'm just serving God and believing God for his grace and mercy for them to serve him as well. And when I see them serving God, it just moves me to tears. And I know it's not something I can take credit for. And people will try to, to make you take credit. Do not touch what belongs to God. Ooh, Pastor Andy, that was a great message. <laughs> Heard about one guy who's a singer. And uh, so he, he would sing and he kind of had this thing because people would say, oh man, that was so anointed. And he said he would say, it was all God, you know. And uh, so some guy, he comes down and he said, man, that was really good. And he said, it was all God. And he said, well, it wasn't all that good. <laughs> he said it really checked him. <laughs> I have to change what you're saying and say, well, I just want to give glory to God for whatever a value that comes through me, we want to give him the glory. It makes more sense than it was all God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So carrying cares and worry and anxieties is pride. You don't realize it, but you're saying, I got this. I can do this. And you don't trust God with it. That's what I tell a lot of parents. They're telling me about their children. You know, as a youth pastor, they're like, oh, God, can you fix them? I'm like, oh, no. I can believe God with you for them, though. And sometimes, moms, dads, listen, sometimes we have to quit nagging. Sometimes we have to quit telling them what they're not. And start walking in faith and acting like they are. Act like your prayers are working. Praise God. And just love the heck out of them. Praise the Lord. I'm not saying they get to run your house in any way, but by all means. That is your house, and there are standards that you must uphold. That is not, I'm not saying. Because um, there are things that are going on in this day, in this generation, where it would be, I don't think so. Are you paying the bill? No. Here's the door. On this side of that door, this is what you do. Why am I talking like this? On that side, you can do stuff, but it might be if you do that, you can't come on this side of the door. Do you understand? Praise the Lord. Well, what if, what if you lose your children? Listen, now that's a whole different type of fear right there, you guys, that you are so afraid to do the right things that you'll lose your children. You just go ahead and let them go because you better do the right thing or you're not helping them at all. There are things that we cannot compromise. 
Y'all with me? Praise God. You're teaching them. This is what we are guarding. Guard your heart with all diligence. Guard your home with all diligence. And we're in, a, we're in a crazy day, a crazy society. Parents are, are having to make decisions because their children have made wrong decisions. Listen, my, my daughter will not bring home her girlfriend. You cannot bring her up in this house. I love you, baby. Now, I hope you all know what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about a friend. Dude brings home his boyfriend. Uh -uh. Not on my watch. Now, you know, I know that many of us come from the old school where your mama told you, you know, look, I brought you in this world. I'll take you out. I love you, baby, but I will kill you. And we believed him. We're like, man, that's, my life is in danger. I'm in fear for my life everywhere I am because she'll find out. And so, so we've kind of dismissed this guarding and protecting, and we've become fearful of the wrong things. We cannot be afraid of doing right. We cannot be afraid of speaking Listen, nobody in that White House is my God. Nobody in any government is my God. Not mayors, not city councils. When you are asking me to compromise my faith, I will stand and I will not be afraid. We are looking for the church to rise. Open your eyes and see the truth. Hold to the truth. Buy the truth and sell it not. Don't live cowardice. God has not given us the spirit of fear unto bondage, but he has given us the spirit of power and of love and a sound mind. Our hearts have been adopted. We are sons and daughters. We are children of the Most High. We have no reason to be afraid. We have no reason. And we're living in a day that's demanding of us to put ourselves in actual physical danger and to, be, and to risk being misunderstood for the truth of the gospel. We can't be fearful now. We cannot be. Not for our children's sake, not for our homes and families and loved ones' sake. We have to take a stand. The church to become the church. To tell the truth. Hallelujah, I am not afraid. In the Old Testament, God says, don't be afraid of their faces. If you are afraid of their faces, he said, you will be confounded. And that we actually would be required, their blood would be required of us if we do not warn them. This goes for the sinner and the saint. We have an obligation to the lost and to the, to the righteous to tell them, to warn them. Don't be afraid. Amen. Praise God. Yep. We are casting and we're speaking. Amen. We're drawing near to him. Yes. Our hearts cry, Abba, Father. Yes. Amen. Amen.